Well, thank you, Dennis. And I think it's an afternoon. San Diego weather is funny today, but it, uh, it's a nice change of pace, isn't it? This is kind of an exciting time of the year for uh, for us with the uh, Holy Days coming up, and uh, we always look forward to that. You know, God has an incredible future for all mankind, and uh, we really can't imagine how it incredible it's going to be uh, but you know there's a uh, there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 uh, verses 9 and 10 uh, I'm going to read that it it uh, talks just briefly about that and it says in verse 9 it says but as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And, uh, you know, God's imagination is way beyond ours. Uh, you just look at creation and you can see that over and over and over again. Uh, the imagination and the create, created ability that he has. And... Uh, and so life is going to be such that we can't even really begin to imagine it. Uh, it'll take a while to get to where God wants us to be, but uh, it's, it's going to be incredible. But you know, in verse 10, it says, But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So. With God's Spirit, we can begin to imagine a little bit about what God has in store for us. And, uh, you know, one of the things that is, gives us hope is that this life that we live today is nothing compared to what it's going to be eventually. But it's going to take a while to get there. My SPS today is uh, pay attention to every detail of God's word to, be, to become a new creation. I think we all realize that we're not uh, really trying to make us an improved version of ourselves. We're actually, uh, the goal is to become a new creation. In one sense, a second Adam. Uh, God wants all of his uh, people to be like David was after his heart. And uh, it's, it's a lifelong process. We'll never get to where we're going to end up until after we're changed. But realizing that we can change our heart to become a much more godly heart uh, helps us to understand that uh, that's that's the aim that God wants us to uh, work towards. It's a process. It's a lifelong process. And uh, there's a scripture in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen, that that tells us about becoming a new creation. We're not there yet, but we are becoming a new creation. Now, how do we become a new creation? How do we do that? Well, we do it by learning to live by every word of God. Every word of God. And there's a lot of words in the, in the, in the book. And there's hundreds and hundreds of scriptures that talk about what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And uh, so every word of God, and it's important to pay attention to the details as we read, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but paying attention to the details, the nuances of God's uh, principles, it, it's very important. You know, when I first uh, came into the church, before I got drafted in the army in uh, 67, 68, uh, I was 
I heard uh, Ted Armstrong on the radio, and, and so I get, started getting the literature, and, and I got drafted right after that. And uh, anyway, my first meeting with two ministers in the Worldwide Church of God, uh, Fred Brogard and Gil Gothels, two, two very fine men, and I, on the weekends, I was staying at a Seventh-day Adventist serviceman center just to get off the base. Uh, mostly, I went to the Church of God Seventh-day because it took six months for the church to get, get in contact, me, contact with me. But when Mr. Brogard and Mr. Gothos came over, we were at the Seventh-day Adventist serviceman center. And, you know, we got talking and I had a lot of questions. And I mentioned... Uh, you know, that the Adventists were very good people. And uh, Fred Brogard said, well, anyway, he brought up the uh, scripture about Christ. Uh, a rich man came to Christ and uh, said, good master, you know, what do I have to do to earn salvation, or eternal life? And Christ, uh, I won't get into the whole story, but Christ basically came back and said, why do you, why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? There's only one good, that's God. And uh, so that was the point that Mr. Brogard was making, that uh, we're not good. You know, human beings, are in, that, in the sense that I'm talking about, are not good. The only th good thing is God's spirit, God's, God's spirit in us. And uh, so he, he made that point. Now, is that a, did Christ, was that a picky point that Christ made to, the, to this rich man? You know, I, I, I think in some ways, personally, it's like, that's kind of picky, isn't it? You know? But it, it's in the Bible. And again, every word, every word in the Bible is inspired by God. Uh, and men write it down. And, uh, and, and God wants us to, to uh, focus in on every detail that he writes, that he has written, that he inspires Every detail he wants us to pay attention, you know. One word can make a huge difference in our lives. And, uh, and so that was what Christ was, was uh, doing. He was making a, a, what we might consider a picky point, but it really wasn't. Really wasn't. Now, uh, another scripture, Matthew 19, uh, verse 17. Matthew 19, verse 17. And it says, well, actually, that's the scripture that I was referring to where Christ told the rich man that, uh, well, he has, why do you call me good? Another scripture that uh, we might think is kind of unusual or picky or whatever is, uh, and I'm not going to get into the story of Uzzah, but I think most, if not all of us, know the story of Uzzah. You know, uh, they were transporting the uh, Ark of the, of the Covenant. And God had given David and uh, the people that were taking care of the Ark of the Covenant some instructions. And apparently, uh, actually, David was the, was the one to make the first mistake. Anyway, as they were transporting the Ark, apparently an oxen stumbled. And Uzzah just... You know, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure he knew the instructions, but he, he kind of grabbed to uh, keep the ark uh, uh, where it should be. And God killed him. God killed him for doing that. Now, God thinks eternally. So, you know, he, uh, David made the first mistake. Uh, David sh shouldn't have instructed these guys to, to transport this ark the way he did. Uh, but God didn't kill David. God thinks eternally. He thinks he has this plan. He knows how he's working with every human being. And, but he wanted to make a point with Uzzah. When I tell you to do something, then do it the way I tell you to do it. And that's something that God wants all of us to learn. When God says something, hopefully we understand it correctly. And that takes some thought sometimes. Sometimes the details are not spelled out in the Bible. Sometimes we need to think about what it actually is saying. And, and, but when God says something, again, he expects us to think about it, to study about it, and, uh, and to follow what he, he instructs.
uh, our actions can be very, uh, or our intentions can be very good. But sincerity and intentions sometimes don't cut the mustard. God wants us to obey. He wants us to obey. In, uh, you know, we all know the scriptures about uh, what God says. Every person is right in their own eyes. And uh, so we have to be very careful about the details. Why do we have to be careful? Because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little sin leads, can lead, not necessarily, but it can lead to additional sin. And if we compromise a little bit here, if we kind of justify a little bit there, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So we have to be careful to realize that, you know, every little sin has, a, has an impact on our character and the way we behave and the way we think. Now, kind of in conclusion, how do we pay attention to every word of God? And maybe a more important question is, how do we, how do we see the evidence? How do we see the points of evidence that tell us if we are growing in God's way of life? What, what's the evidence? And how do we see that evidence? First, I'll talk a little bit about how we pay attention to every word of God. And I've got four points. Number one, read the Bible slow, very slowly. Read the Bible slowly. You know, again, every little word could make a huge difference in the way we understand that scripture. Every little word can make a difference. Read it slowly. Number two, meditate on what you read. Meditate on it. Think about it. Try to put it into practical advice in, in daily living. Think about it. Am I understanding the scripture correctly? You know, uh, is there something I'm missing there? Number three, try to study, you know, every scripture that pertains to the topic that you're studying. Try to look at every scripture that is connected to that particular principle. And number four, uh, it's a good idea. Got to be careful about it. But we have uh, uh, the Internet. There are many, many, many good books out there to read on any topic that you're studying. And it's important to do that because there's a lot of people that are very intelligent out there. They might not have God's spirit, but they're good thinkers about any topic you talk about today. You have to be careful. You have to be discerning. But there are many good books. There are many good articles on the internet. And as you're studying a particular topic, uh, those are good resources. You know, that's how we pay attention to every word of God. Because we're not gonna think of every little aspect and every little nuance of a particular uh, principle or law on our own. We just won't do it. Uh, I guess we could, <laughs> but generally speaking, we won't. Reading uh, books that have been written by intelligent people, Christians, I mean, in the, in the sense that I'm referring to, they can give us some good thoughts and we can consider their thoughts, consider what they've said. And again, you gotta be careful about that. Now, how do, you, uh, how do you see the evidence? Let me get this question right. How do you see the evidence that this is what you're doing? And there's, at, at the very least, two that, I, that I've thought of. There's probably about 50, but I only thought of two. It, pieces of evidence that show that your thinking and your behavior is changing in the direction of godliness. Let me say that again. Our thinking and behavior is changing toward more godliness. Number one. And again, always remember that we have a tendency to believe what we want to believe. That's just human nature. We have a tendency and a proclivity to believe what we want to believe. And 
every person tends to be right in their own eyes. Those, those are attributes of God's, of uh, carnal nature. We don't like to admit we're wrong. So we have to realize that we have to really look at what we're studying with the idea that uh, we want to believe what God is saying. And, some, and God doesn't spell out a lot of things. He'll give us a principle. He expects us to think about it. He expects us to meditate on it. He expects us to apply it and uh, realize that our carnal nature is, is uh, contrary to God's nature. Number two, is God's Spirit giving us further insight and understanding because we are growing in obedience to God's way of life? In other words, if we are growing, if we are, if we are going to grow in God's way of life, then we have to have obedience. When God gives us an insight through His Spirit, and you know, one of the things about God's Spirit is it, uh, we don't understand the logistics of how Spirit works. We can understand how uh, being given God's Spirit actually does uh, increase our ability to think godly. I mean, that's sort of the purpose of God's Spirit, isn't it? And so, one of the, uh, a second part of evidence that God's Spirit is working in us is God's Spirit is going to give us insights that maybe we didn't have before if we're doing what, we're, what we should be doing, studying, meditating, fasting, uh, and, and thinking and, and applying, in other words, behaving the way God has, has uh, revealed us a, a different way of thinking and behaving. But if we're not doing that, then that spirit is not going to give us any further insights, necessarily. Generally speaking, it won't. God's spirit has to be obeyed in the sense that I'm talking about if we're, if we're going to be given additional and deeper insights. It has to be obeyed. It has to be. And that's what God wants us. That's, God wants us all to be changing out, uh, down through our life. It's a lifelong process of repentance and changing. And God does give his spirit to those who obey. When we do this, we're changing our hearts. I mentioned David was a man after God's own heart, and all of us should be. Every Christian should be a person after God's own heart. And the heart includes our, our total being, our thinking, our beliefs, our memory, our, oh, I've got them written down here, our judgments, our conscience, our discernment. That's part of our heart. And then you have a little bit of a different uh, component of the heart, our desires, our emotions, our feelings. When we have these changes in our heart, if we really have these changes in our heart, then our behavior will change in a godly direction. And that's what God wants. He wants us to change our heart. He wants us to put on his heart. He wants us to realize that his way of life is going to be the only way to live eventually. And he wants first fruits to help Christ and him to change the world. And the future, the future is going to be something we can't even imagine. God's Spirit can help us to imagine a little bit of it. We don't have any idea of God's imagination and how great life will be because that's God's plan. That's what he wants and that's what he'll get.